Look how cute the little lamp rack is now that it's shortened. It's about half the height and it's nighttime outside. So sorry if the lighting is absolutely terrible, but we're going to be starting in today's video, reassembling the amp rack. And uh, as much as it's not a car rack, I like to call it the, the wiring loom. With basically the set of wires that starts from that back wall and then splits off bits as it goes all the way around the room. It's like a wiring loom for a car, so I just describe it as that. It's basically just a whole bundle of shit wires that I try and make look as neat as I can and cut to the right length so it's not a massive mess of wires like it is right now and it's only like that because everything's unplugged and just dropped in the one spot. So, I think I'm going to start by moving that amp rack to pretty much where all those amps are right now loading those in and then just marking up the spots for these uh, components here to go in. And we're gonna try and load the amp rack up tonight. It is also 9.06 and it's also, I have to be up really early tomorrow because I'm going to do a uh, trail ride specialized demo sort of thing. And uh, yeah, I need to be up at like pretty much at six o'clock, so nine hours, so. Not going to be doing a great deal tonight, I'll have to do some after work tomorrow, but nevertheless, let's get started on this and pop some of the stuff in my miniature little amp rack, which used to come up to about my neck and now it comes up to about my waist. Not even, it's probably six inches below my waist, but that being said, my camera's out of focus, there we go. Let's start loading some stuff up into this amp rack. Do not buy Soma Vegas CV2800s if you are planning on moving them because they weigh that much, it is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Found another awesome use for a gorilla pod. Holding up the rack shelf while I screw it in. All right, so that concludes all that I can do tonight. I need to get some sleep because it's really dark out and I need to be up early. So basically all I've been able to do tonight is just put all the amps and things in there. I've left some spacing on top of the Sony receiver for ventilation and I've left this vent spacing there for maybe future pan plans if I run into heating issues with the Sony amp to get a uh, rack mountable fan system. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but they're basically just like a big one unit space amp thing that goes back and it has like four fans in it and it just heats it up and I mean cools it down really really cool so that's why I put that vent in and basically it barely fits it's perfect I might 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 just get a one new rack shelf for the DVD player so it doesn't sit on top of the um, computer but it's not really all that important it would just look even cooler I think but uh there it is the amp rack is shortened and fits everything like a glove. Obviously nothing on the back side of things is plugged in, uh, but with that being said, I'll leave that to tomorrow night. That Gorilla Pod helped me an absolute ton. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for tonight, but I'll, I'll resume this video tomorrow. All right, so it's now the next day and it's time for me to finally start on the wires, oh my God. All right, so I've just brought down the Sherwood speakers, which I don't think many of you will have actually have seen before. There's these really fancy looking, nice dual six and a halves and a tweeter. Those are what I'll be temporarily using as my main left and right at the start here. But as far as the wires go, I think my best bet is to, I'll leave the HDMI and the power for the TV and the internet, but pull every single thing out and put it over here and just dump it on the floor and then take things and plug it back in as I slowly go as I need the things to be back there is when I'll put them back. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm gonna have to pull this couch forward so I can access the power point down there and uh, unplug everything and then just plug it back in as I need to. Also for you, those of you who wonder where the power board goes, uh, this was also the same one used in my last setup. It's just an eight port power board and uh, I can actually cable tie it to the shelf here that uh, my Sony receivers hold on to. Someone asked the Sony STR DN 1050 and uh, that's what I will be using uh, to mount my um, power board to. Okay, so now everything's unplugged from the back of the wall 
As you can see here, there's only one thing there and one thing there, which are these particular lights here that are making my room really, really nice for the video. But with that being said, nothing's running back there except for this here, which is just the bundle of wires for the rear channels, which are currently those Dayton's, whoa, look at that lens flare, which are currently those Dayton speakers. Uh, sorry, not Dayton. I wish they were Dayton. They will be Dayton. The Cantons, uh, these things here, will be going. Sealed three inches. Yeah, they they sound nice for high frequencies, but they don't get super duper loud. But nevertheless, I'm now going to see what wires over here I still need. Uh, I'm just going to do the rule of things that you never do and just tug a wire until it, there it is. And uh, I'll just go over the things that I need to leave in and then I'll move them out of the way so I don't get them confused. And uh, yeah, get rid of everything else I don't need. Also, one thing that I said to myself that I was really gonna do with this system is have a power board of some description under the couch that I can grab and just pull out and have power when I need because obviously those are all blocked off constantly and all the back ones are full. So this power board, there's a power point just here one output's for that light, and the other output's gonna have this power board here plugged into with this little extension cord. So whenever I need power, I can pull that out from under the couch and unswitch whatever channel I need to use for it. And then on the other side, the output of that will be for that power board there. Um, I'm not gonna be consuming masses of power. I'd probably be lucky to reach 2,000 watts of consumption with the new setup. So I don't have an issue running it all off the one power board and then I'll just run straight out of that all wall. Right, so using these extremely large cable ties, I am going to fasten this power board just here up and underneath. And uh, that's how I secured it last time. And that's exactly how I'm gonna do it again. So let's do that. <laughs> So we can see now that that's all cable tied down all nice and neat and uh, the power board is being held up pretty, pretty securely. That ain't going anywhere. Now it does cross over this socket just here, but I've just plugged the receiver in. And that's holding fine, that's connecting fine. So I'm not gonna be too worried about that one. But uh, that aside, realistically, I'm only gonna be using the EQ and the bottom CV2800, so I'm only gonna run power for those, and uh, obviously the PC and DVD player, so I'm not gonna run unnecessary power wires. I'm gonna keep this set, set up as minimalistic as I can and not run anything excessive, but geez, that's a nice view from behind. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yes. Bloody beautiful receiver. Man, you can just feel the bass. Alright, so this is the old front right cable, the connector to the right beamer. And as you can see, on the end of it, there is a speak on connector. So I'm going to have to take this speak on connector off and stick on another set of banana plugs to replace this speak on connector so that it's suitable for the Sherwood speakers instead of the Beamers, because the Beamers require this, the Sherwoods require standard wires. So I'm gonna quickly pull this off and uh, make the wire into these so I can uh, plug them into the Sherwoods. All right, so there we have it. We now have one cable that's just raw wires on both ends. And we now have our front left cable that has banana plugs on both ends of the connector and a spare speak on connector to use for God knows what. All right, so I now have the right Sherwood directly behind the camera and it's time to plug it in. Oh yes, I am so excited. Have not used the Sherwoods for ages. Oh, I can hear bass. Oh yes, the Sherwoods have bass. <laughs> So as we can see, I have a lot of slack on the cable for that left Sherwood, which I'm just going to bundle up behind the Sherwood and cable tie it into a little cluster because eventually, eventually when I'm building my new speakers, they'll be up in the air a bit. So I'll actually need that extra wire. So I'm not just going to chop it down because it's only temporary that I'm using these Sherwoods. God, I forgot how good these things actually sound, but 
that's why at the moment I've got an extra amount of wire there and I'm not going to be chopping them down to lengths because these are just temporary. Alright, so I got a little bit carried away and ended up doing a fair amount of wiring management down low here. I know these are just big as bundles of wire here, but eventually once I know the system is definitely permanent and definitely going to stay, I'll cut all the power cables to length and get everything to length. But aside from that, I've got all these power cables and then they're cable tied and it's like real clean up here. Same on this side, look at the XLRs all nice and clean. It all comes up and they're all the right length and they're, they're all good quality good high brand Nutrix connectors. Everything's gonna be done really, really well with this system. Uh, I'll eventually, I'll fix everything up, up the front here, run some cable tires down here and get all those wires done correctly. Pretty much at this stage, all I've gotta do is select the right mode on the amplifier and uh, run wires out of the back of the amplifier terminals. Uh, I might buy some more banana plugs because I am running out of them. But yeah, once I've done that, that's pretty much it. So again, it's this time of night where I have to be up early for work tomorrow and it's 9.25 and I have to be up in like nine or so hours. So I'm going to be going to sleep again, nice and early. And uh, from then, I will finally should be able to finish this episode up tomorrow. But essentially this has been a two night part episode because every single time I've had a chance, it's been night time to work on this system so with that being said hope you guys have enjoyed this little part here and uh, i'll catch back up tomorrow and then we'll finish part three of the audio system rebuild um so far i have a shit ton of wires that are unnecessary uh these big long ones here we'll have to go back in because they'll be for the subs those splitters over there i don't need all these power boards i don't need most of these are power cables uh, the only two real things left are to run power to the PC and to the DVD player and HDMI from the DVD player down to the receiver. Alright, so that's just the Sherwoods by themselves. They sound absolutely incredible. But today, it's another day, yet again, it's my third day working on this particular episode alone. And in today's video, we're just gonna be tidying up this massive cluster of wires here, uh, wiring in the PC and DVD player, and uh, one, uh, running wires for the subwoofer cables uh, around there. I'm gonna leave bare wire that goes into the back of the, uh, the uh, Sir and Vega ramp down there. And then I'll put banana plugs on the end that are here and here. And I want to say a big thanks, and I'll do it again once I've actually built them. A big thank you to FOH Films or Front of House Films. A uh, link to his channel will be in the description. He is helping me out with the uh, subwoofer box designs, uh, making sure they're tuned to the right frequencies. I'm going for 25 hertz tuning on my new subs, so it's going to be awesome. And he's helped me design the box, so it should definitely get to that. So. With that being said, I'm making sure everything is really, really neat. Obviously, I'll cable tie all these down. And everything is really well done and cable tied down so it's as neat as it can possibly be. So this is going to be the most professionally done setup I can make it. But with that being said, I'm going to hook the DVD player and the computer up. And uh, pretty much... Aside from that, there's not much left to do except for run those cables, which I'll do as well. And then I'll pretty much be all neat and I'll tidy it up. And then it's just to wait for the speakers to come and start the build. All right, so this room is still a horrible, horrible mess. But I finally, finally sorted the wires out all the way around the room. So it's perfectly cable managed everywhere. It's a little bit sloppier behind the amp rack than I'd like, but it's still very, very good compared to what it used to be. So, finally, finally, the system is fully cable managed. And basically, I should just be able to undo two cable ties behind these speakers, have enough wire for it to go up to the old, when I get the new satellites up here. And there's a wire down the bottom there for the subwoofers when they go down there. And besides that, 
there's also a bit of slack on that because I do have plans to build a, cent uh, a stand that goes up maybe a couple feet for the center channel. But besides that, everything's ran, everything's cable tied down. Uh, you see the black cable ties, black cable ties, and then I ran out, so they're blue. And they're blue, but I really couldn't care less. There's white ones on that, so it's not like I'm already not mi mis oh, mixed and matched. But nevertheless, I'm going to tidy these cables up, push the amp rack back, and then I will call it a video. So there it is, episode three of the audio system rebuild is complete. I've just got a massive pile of stuff here that I'm waiting to sell. The Behringer EQ, the crossover, the Phonic amps, and the lovely Beamer speakers. I'm waiting to be sold. My neighbor is cutting something that is very distracting, but nevertheless, everything's now ran. All the wires are ran. They're all nice and neat all the way around. All I need now are components. All I need is the sub, do the sub build. I need the front of the main speakers. I was cutting stuff again, Jesus Christ. Need the main speakers, build the main speaker center channel, rear speakers, and the second subwoofer. It's going to be awesome, and I forgot how much better these hi-fi speakers sound over those PA speakers in this room. It is ridiculous. I'm so glad that I'm swapping back. The new system's going to be awesome, so stick around if you're interested in it. And without further ado, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Chuck a like down below if you've liked the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.